the interest that I have on matters climate change allows from public finance issues because there is a lot of climate financing. Kenya as a country is basically dependent on agriculture. 80% of our populations depend on agriculture. And for that, agriculture becomes a critical uh, area uh, in the survival of this country. Uh, apart from uh, uh, agriculture, we have other areas that are, have also been a major contributor to our revenue that uh, depends on climate sensitive uh, activities. That is water and also tourism. And uh, so therefore we need uh, to see how we can actually be able to mitigate the effects of climate change on these critical sectors that are the back, backbone of our economy. So we developed the curriculum, we developed the training materials, uh, we engaged very experienced uh, people from uh, a Ministry of Environment, uh, the Climate Change Directorate, the other relevant department, Kenya Meteorological Department, and also the National Treasury Climate Change Unit. And with that, we formed a team of facilitators. So the facilitators that we are using are not our normal facilitators as a school. Because as a school, we've not really been having a history on matters climate change. In fact, we, we just introduced one very recently. So with that pool of facilitators then, you are able now to move out. And um, we did a training in our campuses. The first two cohorts were trained here, in, here, here, here at Kabete. We had uh, two, two cohorts trained in, um, Moba, uh, in Mombasa. We had also an, two other cohorts trained in uh, Matuga, and we had the last cohort in Embu. So for us, the biggest output we expected from that training, uh, from that program was actually uh, to reach to the Climate Change Coordination Unit and be able to deliver that message because we had realized that there was a major gap in terms of uh, communication flow. Uh, and we have officers who are in climate sensitive department, but do not understand especially the financing aspect or the, in terms of climate change and financing. We have a climate change unit. That unit was created after that program. And uh, our director general is very passionate about climate change. So immediately uh, a unit was created and uh, would handle all matters, uh, environment and climate change. My name is Sheila Mora uh, Ngare. Uh, I work with the Climate Change Directorate of the Ministry of Environment. I was part of the training with UNCC LAN. The reason why I decided to join the diplomacy training is because I really wanted to understand what happens uh, in the COP. Uh, conference of parties uh, conference so because it, it's it's to me uh, before it, it used to be this mystical you know like grouping where people will come together from all walks of life the, you know the whole world and they will all come together and discuss but I didn't understand what were they discussing about how do they discuss how do they reach a, agreement on anything and uh, during that time we've learned a lot about climate change diplomacy uh, what happens in the uh, conference of parties negotiations and everything to do with climate change in general they were able to provide us with that kind of um, scientific knowledge of okay how what is climate change um, how you know what can we do about it in terms of uh, mitigating or through adaptation techniques what can we do about it Climate change does impact the water sector, the agricultural sector, um, the private sector. It links all of us together. I'm very happy that I was involved in the NDC, uh, NDC update in Kenya, where at least I gave a contribution towards the youth 
uh, sector on how the youth can contribute to how we can fight climate change in Kenya. And um, I'm also very happy that I gave numerous presentations uh, to one to the Ministry of Energy, to, to some youth groups at the Council of Governors. I've uh, given numerous presentations <laughs> or talks to the Ministry of Health. Being a young person, I'm able to engage with the youth in their own language so that they're able to understand you know the t uh, climate change technical knowledge in, in their in their own capacity so what i would change um, at the cop negotiations i would want women of color to participate in uh, the in you know in the negotiations because we are the ones who are mostly affected we are the ones who are living in uh, regions that are heavily impacted by climate change but i don't i don't see those faces there especially black women i've not seen any prominent black women um, in that high level space it, it seems to me it, to me it seems only uh, say de women from developing uh, developed countries occupying that space and i uh, and i think we need better representation whatever is happening uh, happening at cop to this whatever discussions are there they should be aired for everybody and everyone to see it should be running through uh, news stations across the world I encourage everyone to visit the UN CCLAD website where you'll find numerous courses to deal with that deals with climate change, how we will mitigate climate change, how we will adapt to climate change. All these courses are free. If you're very passionate about the environment, if you know that it, uh, climate change actually affects you and you understand how it affects you, I would recommend this training. But also for those who don't understand what is climate change, is this something in the air that you know, is affecting me and I don't know what it is. So yeah, I would recommend it to everybody. My name is Victor Mugo. I am the country coordinator for the Climate Smart Agriculture Youth Network. The first thing that uh, I really liked about uh, this learning strategy was uh, the recognition that it, 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 it is meant for especially young people, that it was quite um, great for me to be there as a, as a young person, really helping uh, to co-create solutions about young people with young people in the room. I really liked uh, the fact that there were um, the highest people in, in the land, PSAs, uh, CSAs, Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of Education uh, and the likes. There are common people, there are persons uh, living with disability who are there. So I really liked that co-creation of solutions together with everyone in the room. It's good to have the people who uh, this uh, policy is meant for uh, and so it, it also helping to create that policy. And so I really liked that uh, about this strategy formulation process. Whether we like it or not, we are being affected by climate change. And it, it has moved from an abstract topic uh, to something that we can see on our every everyday basis. Uh, at the moment, I can see about 1.4 million people who are uh, facing hunger and, and drought. Then I can also see things such as the rising uh, of the lakes uh, in, in, in the Great Rift Valley. Now we see also the locust crisis. And so uh, I think it, it is quite vital for all of us to know what we are facing. And, and I think information is really is power, especially for young people. It's not just information, it's insight in how they can be able to undertake um, activities and programs that can be able to uh, help them to cope first to the changing climate, but also to see how we can halt. There are very many numerous opportunities within the agricultural space um, in which I think young people can be able to tap in. Uh, I think we can use the youth demographic as, as a good conduit for which we can spark climate action in Kenya. I think the first stage I was getting this strategy in place, but the other greater thing that we need to do is to make sure that it is implemented and, and it comes um, into, into fusion in, in, in our spaces.
My name is Victor Buire. I work at the Media Council of Kenya, the premier national institution that regulates the standards and sets standards for journalists and obviously approves courses for any specialized training for journalists. Media Council and partners had specific deliverables. To be specific, there were four. Though we added two or three uh, by, by, by way of the project itself, giving results that were not uh, initially intended. So one was we, do a, we set up a technical committee to look at the gaps in the training of curriculum in the region. So we set up a committee that did a gap analysis. So the gap analysis was done in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Uganda to establish what is existing in terms of climate change reporting. And we did establish nearly 16 gaps in terms of training. We felt there was no uh, any journalism college actually in the region that was offering training specifically on climate change. That's how our training and especially our relationship with FOA, the, uh, the government of Kenya through Treasury, and the current NAP preparedness training and curriculum came in. We developed the curriculum itself now because part of the output was to develop a curriculum after, after doing all these things. So we have a, a curriculum. Through a competitive process, picked 12, uh, 20 people who have been trained thoroughly on this curriculum. And this was, they can help us in training or any other person who wants to train on climate change. We already have a group of people who have been trained. Then we had a training of 60 journalists. So we trained 60 journalists from 12 counties. These are counties that were under uh, review by the Ministry, uh, Ministry of Forestry and Environment that are seem to be vulnerable in terms of climate change. The NAP Readiness Program is a huge program. What we are doing is a component of a huge project uh, that, that, that involves the government of Kenya and the, the, the UN family. And, and part of it is being done by the Kenya private sector, from, I mean, the other bit is being done by the Kenya School of Government. So Media Council uh, was uh, picked on the part that relates the training mm -hmm. of journalists, pu public communication officers, on the issue of uh, creation of awareness through media uh, by creating a pool of journalists and communication officers drawn from government, public institutions and, and journalists from uh, the, the media to help in changing the behavior because we are looking at the, 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 the knowledge, attitude and, and practice change among people and media is a key component in terms of setting the agenda and perception about. So if we're going to have, because some of the issues we are talking about in climate change are largely cultural, traditional things that people have refused uh, to move. I mean, and, and, and if we don't attack their behavior change patterns through behavior change, uh, using media, especially community media, radio, radios to help people change perspectives, change uh, the new way of looking things, then we are failing. So uh, the BEAT Media Council and, and the, the, the four partners I've mentioned is largely on public awareness, on me, uh, especially targeting media and public communication. But again, like I mentioned, to ensure sustainability, we are working with the universities and colleges that teach journalism. It has aspects on journalism that are done by journalists, but there are also now aspects that are done by experts from the university, from the ministry, from the NGOs to bring in now, to we give the journalists the content. You know, when you are writing a story about climate change, for example, or people invading wetlands, what international convention do you indicate to show that there was a human rights violation here? Now we are talking about the issue of solution-based journalism. And for journalists to do solution-based or context journalism, they must have deepened understanding of what they are doing.